Hello, I'm Cheryl, and this is Sleep Tight Relax, a calming bedtime podcast for the young and young at heart. It's time to get cozy in bed and listen to tonight's story. Our sleep story tonight is about a boy named Anthony and his sister, Babette. They live with their parents and work very hard to put food on the table. When Antony carves his pumpkins to take to town and sell as jack-o'-lanterns, Babette decides she'd like to have one to use at the Halloween party. No matter how your day was, let's forget about it for now and focus on slowing down and feeling relaxed. Close your eyes and feel warm and secure. Next, I would like you to take a slow, deep breath in through your nose, as big a breath as you can and as slow as you can. Then slowly let the air out through your mouth. Taking deep belly breaths helps us relax at any time of the day but it's a great habit to have before sleep. Try it again. Take a deep breath in and let the air slowly flow out. Take a deep breath in and now out. Breathe in deeply, filling your body with air and relaxation. Breathe out slowly, expelling any tension. Try to keep breathing slowly and deeply as we continue with a tale for Halloween. Babette and Antony were the children of a very poor woodcutter. They lived in a little cottage on the side of a steep mountain, and the mountain looked upon a great forest. Now, though their father worked in this forest from dawn until dark, he earned very little. Wood in that region was plentiful, and woodcutters were numerous. Their mother made fine laces, which Antony carried to the market to sell. But in spite of all their efforts, the parents often could give their children no more than bread and soup to eat. Babette and Antony, however, were happy little children. But it worried the woodcutter that Antony was 10 years old and had not yet gone to school. Antony's mother taught him to read and write so that the other boys and girls would not be too far ahead of him. And Antony studied his lessons diligently. Often as he sat doing his math on the hearthstone with a bit of charcoal for a pencil, his mother would sigh sadly. Antony did not like his mother to be sad and so he always laughed to cheer her. Never fear, mother, he would say. Soon I shall send myself to school. My vegetable patch is doing well. Then, when I am a great scholar, you shall be poor no longer. Father will have a team of oxen, and you will have a fine satin gown. Babette will have a dozen real dollies instead of the turn-up dollies she now rocks in her dolly cradle. Ah, Antony, my son, his mother would answer with a sigh. Ah, unless you make your fortune as a maker of toys, I fear you will have no fortune at all. Your fingers are as clever as a wizard's even now. And though you are past ten, we cannot spare you to go to school. It was true, as she said. 
Antony made boats from bits of cedar wood, and when he had fitted them with sails, you could not tell the difference between them and those that had come out of a shop. He carved a doll's cradle from a pine knot, and for a dolly, painted the face of a turnip until one would think it was the face of some fair maiden. So blue were the turnip dolly's eyes, and so pink her cheeks. Her hair of corn silk fell in such waves, and her robe of young cabbage leaves was so green and beautiful. Then, as often as this turnip dolly faded and began to shrivel, Antony made another, which Babette always said was more beautiful than the one before. Babette had never been to the village and therefore knew nothing of real dolls. She loved her turnip babies tenderly indeed. She always carried them in her arms when she went with Antony to meet their father and sang them little songs as she rocked them to sleep. Now it happened one night in the season of Halloween that Antony sat carving jack-o'-lanterns to sell in the village. Babette, who was rocking her dolly to sleep, sat watching him. Being only six, she knew nothing about the fun which comes with Halloween, and so she listened round-eyed with wonder to Antony, who knew all things about jack-o'-lanterns. When she heard that boys and girls dressed like witches and ghosts and celebrated in the village streets, Babette made up her mind to celebrate too. How fine it must be, she cried, clapping her hands. Halloween must be quite like Christmas. Not quite so fine as Christmas, Babette, answered Antony, as he carved the teeth in the last jack-o'-lantern. But Halloween is very fine, nevertheless. It is funny to see the jack-o'-lanterns bobbing up and down with their faces grinning in the candlelight. And on Halloween, the boys and girls play pranks, and everyone laughs and is happy on that night. Antony finished the jack-o'-lantern and piled it with a dozen more in his little cart. He would sell them all in the village when he took his vegetables to market the next day. No one else could carve such splendid pumpkin faces as Antony. Then let us go and play pranks in the village too, Antony, cried Babette. Mother will make us ghost dresses, and there is still one great pumpkin in your garden for a jack-o'-lantern. Oh, what a party we shall have. Babette! exclaimed Antony in astonishment. Where did you get such an idea? The party in the village is not for us. Mother has no time to make us ghost dresses, and if she did, she has no materials. Besides, how would we find our way home through the forest? You know the way through the forest, Antony, insisted Babette. And if Mother cannot make us ghost dresses, we can go without. It will be dark, and our jack-o'-lantern will be as fine as any. Do come, she begged. I have never been to a Halloween party. Now, Babette, I tell you we cannot go to the village tomorrow night, answered Antony. I could not find my way home through the forest after dark, and we would both be lost. Be a good girl and do not tease any more. Antony spoke sternly, and Babette burst into tears. She was very fond of getting her own way, and when she could not have it, sometimes she was an angry little girl. She sobbed and wept so loudly that Antony found it hard to refuse her. However, he dared not go to the village at night, as he was afraid he would lose his way in the forest. So Antony whispered to Babette, that he would buy her chocolate, but she only wept even harder. Now Babette, cried Antony at last, when Babette showed no signs of stopping. I cannot take you to the village, but if you are a good girl and stop crying at once, 
I will make a little Halloween party just for you and me. Now promise me you will not cry anymore. Babette dried her eyes and promised. She wished for a Halloween party, but whether she danced at home or in the village didn't matter to her. Will we wear ghost dresses or witch dresses, Antony? She asked. Antony thought for a moment before he answered. Oh, ghost dresses, I think, he said. The next day, Babette was very good. She helped Antony gather his vegetables for market, and when he returned, sat beside him quietly while he carved the last pumpkin from his garden. When the jack-o'-lantern was finished, Antony lit the candle just for one second so that she might see it grinning in the light. Babette clapped her hands, but he held up a warning finger. The Halloween party was to be a secret. After supper, the children went to bed as usual, but instead of undressing, they pulled their white nightclothes over their heavy coats. They will do for ghost dresses, whispered Antony when all was still, and they crept softly out. In the moonlight, the jack-o'-lantern was grinning broadly to greet them. Pumpkin is smiling at us, laughed Babette. She was very happy, for her party was about to begin. Antony struck a match to light the candle, but there was no candle in the jack-o'-lantern. I put the candle in. I know I did, he said in surprise. He searched in the dark, and Babette stopped her laughing. Antony looked about, and there beneath the bench lay the remainder of his precious candle. It was chewed to bits, and the wick was in shreds. Oh, Babette, he cried. A rat has stolen our candle, and I paid a whole penny for it, too. Oh, the bad rats, cried Babette, bursting into tears. She stamped her foot and sent the jack-o'-lantern rolling off the bench. It struck the earth with a bump and dented its nose a bit. Now, Babette, look what you have done, cried Antony. He stooped to pick up the pumpkin, but the pumpkin was too quick for him. Oh, no, you don't, laughed Pumpkin in a thick, throaty sort of voice. Babette smashed my nose a bit, but that's no matter on a Halloween night. Goodbye, boys and girls, he called airily and rolled swiftly down the hill. You come back here. You're my pumpkin, cried Antony, and started after the runaway. Babette followed, weeping and crying aloud. Oh, my Halloween party! Oh, my Halloween party! she cried. Now we have no jack-o'-lantern and no candle either. But just you wait until he rolls down into the vegetable garden, shouted Antony as he chased the swiftly rolling pumpkin. You'll have to stop at the hedge. He took his little sister's hand so that she might run faster. Pumpkin rolled along just in front of them, but always just out of their reach. When he reached the hedge, he gave a great leap and landed directly in the vegetable patch. Come on, you turnips, come on, you carrots, called Pumpkin as he rolled along. At his words, the carrots and turnips tore themselves from their beds and followed after him shouting. Come on, come on, called Pumpkin, and parsnips and beets followed the carrots and turnips. Look at Antony following us, yelled Pumpkin, and all his vegetable followers turned and laughed. Ordinary nights, you may be boss, Antony, they cried, but not on Halloween. This is our night. Well, you wait until I catch you, called Antony angrily. He was angry to see all his vegetables going to waste. Oh, it's Halloween, it's Halloween, sang Pumpkin turning handsprings as he rolled along. 
and the rest of the vegetables did cartwheels as they went dashing after him. They looked like a dozen market stalls upset on the hillside, and poor Antony nearly cried when he thought of the loss. He followed them with determination. Antony was not a lad to give up easily. Follow me, follow me, sang Pumpkin, as he led the way to a tiny door that opened beneath the forest. Turnips and carrots squeezed through, and Antony, fearing to be left behind, caught up to Babette and ran faster. Just as he reached the little door, a potato tried to close it on him, but Antony was too quick for him. He ran through and climbed down the hole into the underground forest. There he continued the chase, but the ground here was springy and elastic, and with each step, Antony began to gain on the vegetables. Babette's fatigue left her, and she shook herself free of Antony's hand. We'll catch up to them, declared Antony as they ran along. Even as he spoke, Potato stubbed his toe, and Babette caught him. She held him firmly, although he squirmed and tried his best to get free. Help, help, cried Potato, when he saw he was a prisoner. Oh, Pumpkin, wait for me, he cried. The tears streamed from every one of his eyes, and he looked truly sad. At his cries, Pumpkin turned around and all the vegetables followed their leader. Come now, Antony, began Pumpkin in a persuasive voice. You might let us have one night off, you know. Halloween is our night. Somewhere on his run, Pumpkin had picked up two twigs, and on these he now balanced himself rather unsteadily and thrust his leaves in the place where his pockets would have been if he had had pockets. He looked so very jolly and his grin was so very broad that Antony was almost convinced to give up Potato. But just then, he thought of the ruined vegetable garden and grew angry again. It is all very well for you to be polite, Pumpkin, and try to beg for your friend, said Antony but this is the very fellow that tried to close the door in my face not two seconds ago. Oh, Antony, cried Potato. That's wrong. It was three seconds ago, as true as I live. I looked at my watch just as I was trying to pinch your nose in the underground door, and it's quite three seconds ago. Maybe it's four. Oh, shh, cried Pumpkin. That's no way to talk when you are trying to be let go. Let him off for my sake, Antony, he continued in a most winning voice. You'd get very tired of being in bed yourself, you know you would. See if you wouldn't take the first chance to kick up your heels if you could get it. But Pumpkin, replied Antony, think of my vegetable garden. It is ruined. I was saving all my vegetable money to go to school. And now I cannot go forever and ever. That is so long. Besides, how could I know you got tired of being in a bed? You never spoke to me before. Well, I speak to you now, replied Pumpkin. And as for your vegetable patch, we'll all make that up to you, won't we, boys? We will, we will, called the vegetables in chorus. And the potato in Babette's little fist yelled loudest of all. There now, you see, we mean no harm, declared Pumpkin, so let Potato go. Then you can both join us in our Halloween party. At the magic words, Halloween party, Babette put Potato down at once. She was determined to have her fun, and after all, the vegetables seemed to be a fun bunch. So peace was made, and the children followed the bobbing turnips and onions. Then shouts were heard, and Pumpkin ordered a halt. Soon they were joined by a dozen or more cabbages. You're not very nice, panted the cabbages. There we sat in the storeroom waiting for you to call us, and the first thing we knew, 
We saw you racing off down the hill like crazy. My gracious, said a very stout cabbage, who was terribly out of breath. I'll have to take off my outer leaves before I go another step. I feel as though I was boiled. Antony recognized the cabbages at once. You are Father Minette's cabbages, are you not? He inquired politely as they marched along. Why, if it isn't little Antony, the woodcutter's son, exclaimed the very stout cabbage. Yes, we have come from Minette's farm. Mother Minette saved us for pickles, but we fooled her and slipped out of the storeroom when she was not looking. Oh, we cabbages are not as green as we look. The cabbages all laughed, and Antony was surprised to find that he laughed too. As they went marching on, Pumpkin sang and danced in the lead, and onions and carrots echoed his hearty songs. Presently, great black cats with shining yellow eyes stepped from behind the trees, and each cat was soon joined by its owner, who was no other than a real witch in a tall peaked hat and carrying a broomstick. The cabbages, who were a friendly lot, introduced Antony and Babette to these witches, and the witches seemed pleased to meet the children. They do not seem to be wicked witches, do they, Antony? whispered Babette. Oh, my dear, replied a witch who overheard. We are not a bit wicked on Halloween, you know. Any other night, I would probably be up to some mischief. It is my nature, you know. She reached in her bag and handed Babette a peppermint. Babette, who was very fond of peppermint, ate it up quickly. You shouldn't do that, my dear, said the witch. It is not very often witches give peppermints, and when they do, the peppermints should be treasured. Here is another to keep for your pocket, and then you will never be without a peppermint when you want one. And she handed Babette another. Babette thanked her so nicely that the witch was charmed and took her to ride on her broomstick. It was the best company one could ever imagine as they marched along. Every vegetable was singing a different Halloween song in a different key, and they all had voices that sang out of tune by nature. Babette, her little white nightdress flying in the breeze, was riding on the witch's broomstick, and singing as loudly as the rest. When they reached the dancing floor, it was lit with millions and millions of glowworms, and an orchestra of 10,000 frogs hummed lively tunes in their throats. Pumpkin seized a handful of glowworms and put them in his head. Then, with his features all aglow, he cried out, Ready for the dance! Instead of taking partners, the vegetables just plunged onto the floor and began to jump around like mad. If they fell down, they did not jump up at once, but rolled around the floor most good-naturedly. They looked so like vegetables boiling about in a great soup kettle that Antony thought he should cry from laughing. The witches took their brooms and began a sort of dance while they chased their cats around the edge of the circle. Babette danced hardest of all. She knew no more of dancing than any carrot or parsnip, but she danced wildly, singing at the top of her voice. Come and dance too, Antony, called Babette, as she went jumping past her brother. But he shook his head and laughed. I am too big for such nonsense, he said. I am ten, you know. What nonsense, cried a witch who was chasing her cat close by. Ten is exactly the right age to have fun. She raised her broom playfully, and before he knew it, she swept Antony into the middle of the dance. Pumpkin, his grinning features all aglow, went flying past and made Antony feel proud. Pumpkin was certainly the most handsome vegetable of the lot. As the night grew later, the frogs hummed faster, but hum as fast as they could, they could not keep up with the frisky vegetables. Beets and cauliflowers continued to bob up and down like mad. Cabbages from Minette's farm lost leaf after leaf. 
Carrots and onions grew battered from much tumbling about. And the merry din of song and laughter grew louder and louder. Good gracious me, cried the witch. The glowworms are all gone out. It's nearly morning. Anyone who was going back to the vegetable patch had best be on their way. Not me, cried Pumpkin. I'm finished with vegetable patches forever. Not us, exclaimed the cabbages. We're going to be wild cabbages for the rest of our days. We won't go back to Mother Minette's pickle jars. Straight away, every vegetable began to raise its voice and declare it would not go back to Antony's patch. Oh, shh, all of you, cried the witch. Stay in the woods for the rest of your life if you like. It is nothing to me. But what of Antony and Babette? Who is to take them home? Well, ma'am, replied Pumpkin with a low bow, we thought you might be good enough to give them a ride home on your broomstick. But Pumpkin, cried Antony in dismay, you promised to make it up to me if I let Potato go, and I think you should all return with me. I will not have any vegetables if you all remain in the woods. Don't worry about that, Antony, replied Pumpkin. Here is a purse for each of you. And if you take good care never to lose them, you will have plenty of money forever. Isn't that true, boys? True as we're not going back to the farm, cried the cabbages. You had best hurry and plant yourself before it grows daylight, Pumpkin. They warned and began to dig holes in the earth. Before Antony and Babette had gotten on the witch's broomstick, all the carrots and turnips and even Pumpkin were all tucked up in their sandy beds. They called a faint goodbye as the children sailed off with the witch. Oh, what a beautiful Halloween party, sighed Babette, as she leaned her head on Antony's shoulder and fell fast asleep. The broomstick flew with the swiftness of an eagle, and the witch warned Antony to hold Babette with a firm grasp. One by one, the stars went out as they sped across the sky. The black cat steered and seemed to know exactly the way to the woodcutter's cottage. For just as the dawn was breaking, the broomstick glided down to Babette's window. The witch shook hands with Antony, and the black cat politely jumped off to help Antony with his little sister. Before the good creature could get back on again, the broomstick was off like a whirlwind, and it was left behind. This broomstick is so wild I cannot stop it, called the witch from the clouds. Take good care of my cat until next Halloween. Antony helped Babette get into bed and made the black cat a comfortable bed in the kitchen. Then he lay down to sleep and dreamed of the Halloween party until he was woken by his mother. Come, Antony, she cried. I have good news for you. Look out the window and see the great black cat without a single white hair that sits washing his face in the sun. Such a cat coming to us on Halloween will surely bring us good luck. But come, my child, get up. It's late and it is time for you to dig vegetables for market. My vegetables have gone wild in the forest, muttered Antony. But it is no matter, for here is a bag of money that they gave me. The cat is the black cat of the witch who brought us home on her broomstick. So please let me sleep, mother. I am tired from dancing at the Halloween party. He closed his eyes and slept again while his mother examined the money bag. Antony, my son, she screamed. Where did you get all this money? She shook him and gave him no peace until he woke fully and told her the story. Even then, his mother did not believe it, but threw up her hands and cried that her son should carry on like this. The woodcutter and Babette came running to see what had happened. And at the sight of the second bag of money, the poor woman grew calmer. Babette showed the peppermint which the witch had given her, and the mother doubted no more. To receive a peppermint from a witch is surely a mark of great favor, she said, and began to laugh through her tears. I thought I was dreaming or that Antony had a fever, for never in my life had I seen so much money. 
It is like the fairies to bless our children, said the woodcutter. Now, Antony will go to school, and Mother will have a lovely dress and shawl. It would have been hard to find a happier family than the woodcutters as they set out for the village that day. The greatest marvel of all was that no matter how much the woodcutter or his wife spent, the bags always remained full of money. Antony chose a pair of skates in the village shop and bought an armful of books that he had wanted. Babette, however, with her usual contrary ways, would have none of the dollies in the village toy shop. They were not pretty, she declared, and their cheeks were not pink and beautiful as were the turnip dollies Antony made for her. And from that day forward, the woodcutter and his wife were no longer poor. Antony went to school, and Babette had a beautiful dress. Their mother no longer sighed as she went about her household tasks, and neither did she strain her eyes making fine laces for market. Instead, she sat proudly at the seat of her husband's ox cart when he delivered wood in the village. Sometimes, she even drank tea with the mayor's wife. Each year, as regularly as Halloween came to mark the harvest time, Antony and Babette mounted the broomstick with the witch and rode off to the Halloween party. There they always found Pumpkin grown rounder and jollier than the year before, and they always rode home across the sky just as the dawn was breaking. The black cat became so fond of Babette that it never again rejoined its rightful owner but remained with the woodcutter and his family and brought them good luck for the rest of their days. And that's the end of our story. Good night. <laughs>